If you want to check out Marceline, the Vampire Queen, from Adventure Time, please go to my Discord channel, where you'll be able to find Marceline, as well as a few other character conversions that I have done that I didn't find a need to put on this channel, or forgot about in the case of a couple of my videos. Link will be in the description. Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehan, and welcome back to Character Concept. In this series, for those of you who are new, I go over the lore in Dungeons and Dragons for each individual playable race within the game. Today we are looking at Furbolgs, one of the two giant races within Dungeons and Dragons. That's right, I bet you didn't know that there were two giant kin that you could play as. The Furbolg are actually a decent race. A little bit better than the Goliaths, in my opinion, as far as flavor goes, because of the ability to cast a druid spell without even having to take a class. No. Oh my goodness, that actually goes right over me. I do not remember why they have this uh, feature. But they are closer to nature than the Goliaths are. Uh, I think it has something to do with a nature goddess. I don't remember. I'll have a... Oh my goodness, I have not been linking to bits of lore that I've been finding. Okay, I need to start doing that. Uh, link in the description for... Any videos or sites that I can find that help show what the lore is. Uh, that tell you the lore of any of these creatures uh, you see in my videos. For this video, of course, is the Furbolg. Okay, so let's go ahead and get straight into things. Uh, for backgrounds, we have the Hermit, the Outlander, and the Uthgot tribe member. Classes is pretty obvious, but Druid, Fighter, and Ranger are going to be your best bets for a Furbolg, if you're just going for a quick and easy character. Now, as always, we are able to go... We... Able. We will be going more in-depth on each and every class that best fits the Furbolg. We're going to start off with, of course, the Druid. This actually has been stated in the lore that I remember, but they are best fitted for the Circle of the Land and the Circle of the Shepherd. And that is because they are seen as shepherds. That's pretty explanatory. <laughs> anyway, these two circles seem to be the best fit for the Furbolds. They have a druidic vow already, so why not? For Ranger, the Beastmaster, the Fey Wanderer, the Swarm Keeper, and the Prime Evil Guardian will be your best bets. And that is because of the Furbolg's tie to the Feywild. Yeah, and that was part of it. A uh, Swarm Keeper just as much fits with the Furbolg as the Shepherd does, the uh, Shepherd Druid does. And Beastmaster as well. Moving on to the Fighter, the Rune Knight and the Champion are going to be your two best bets for martial subclasses. Rune Knight, because it, their practices originated from the Giant Race. You'll probably see your Dungeon Master using Rune Knight features in some of the giant uh, monsters that you come across. If not, then 
Shame on you, Dungeon Masters. This is pretty good lore stuff here that you're missing out on. Moving on to the Barbarian. While it doesn't really seem like it, a fur bulk would actually fit a Barbarian decently well. For your best bets, going for the paths of the Ancestral Guardian, Beast, Totem Warrior, and Wild Magic would be excellent for your fur bulk. And do remember that giants in general have this hatred for dragons. So having a barbarian furball could actually be pretty sweet to use in a dragon campaign setting. Now, this is more of an in general to giant races. But they like talking about their history. So having a bard of the College of Lore would actually be pretty neat. It would be practically spot on with how the giants work. But that's as far as I got on bards. Moving on to wizard, I would suggest using either the blade singer illusion or lore mastery lore mastery once again being because of their ties to their history illusion because uh, well that's just in their their race features they're good with illusions so it would make sense to have an illusion wizard for clerics since the giants are sort of religious, and Furbogs already have a tie into nature. Having the domains of either life or nature would actually make sense for your Furbog. The same goes for the Paladin Oath of the Ancients. Since you already have a tie to nature, having an oath that also ties you deeper into the forces of nature makes perfect sense. Warlock of the Archfey ties more into your ties into the Feywild. So it would actually make perfect sense for you to have some sort of pact with an Archfey or some other force of the Feywild. For rogues, while not necessary, if I remember correctly, Furbolgs aren't the confrontational type, but they will try to defend themselves the best they can. So having a rogue in your repertoire would actually make sense. More accurately, the arcane trickster, once again, for those illusionary acts and the scout. This was actually point out Point blank said in the lore that they have scouts. For the sorcerer, the rune child, wild magic, and here's that giant thing again giant soul sorcerer would be your best bet. I would actually recommend giant soul more so than either the Rune Child or Wild Magic Sorcerer. But Wild Magic would probably be my second pick for a Fur Bog character. Now that's all the time I have for you today, my dear viewers. I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, and for what you want to see next, please put it into the... the the comment section down below. Oh, my words, I can't think straight. Oh well, I do hope you enjoyed. Until next time, my dear viewers, this has been Drehan, and I am offline.